hello hi how are you I'm doing amazing I hope you guys are doing really well I just filmed a tutorial Tuesday doing this look and that should be going up on my channel tomorrow so if you're interested to see how I did this yellow and black creation um you can go check out that video tomorrow it's also a collab so you guys can go check that out I saw Lauren May Beauty do this video uh a few weeks ago I think it was before the end of the new year for sure and I had done something similar I filmed a whole video where I showed you guys me calculating my makeup collection the total value and I never posted it because I never really felt like it served a purpose to post it like because I didn't do it the way she did it I simply just told you the entire total of everything and I felt like it kind of it just seemed like an off it was just like a time lapse of me doing math and it just seemed really boring but I really liked the way she did it so I redid the whole thing again and decided I was going to tally up the total of my makeup collection I did each category I tallied up the total of each category I split my whole collection into categories and then I also did something that she didn't do but I thought just because I my boyfriend's a math person and he thought it'd be cool um <laughs> I decided to do the average price of every single category of what I spent on average depending on like makeup and there was also some couple things I noted in each category basically we're gonna get into it I want to make it very clear I'm not making this video <laughs> to be like oh look at me I'm so first of all a lot of this stuff gets sent to me I would say probably like 10 to 15 percent of my makeup collection is stuff that was sent to me I also get a lot of gifts you guys saw my Christmas haul I get a lot of makeup for presents I also buy a lot of stuff on sale or at discounted prices because I wait till sales like a crazy person so basically this is just the retail value of my makeup collection but it's not necessarily how much I spent either way it's still a lot of money so I just want to make it very clear I'm not really like proud of this and I kind of wanted to take this video to explain why I'm kind of doing this no buy for the next until the end of February kind of because of this like what we're about to talk about like I just feel like it's very easy to lose track of the money aspect of makeup and like how much money you're actually spending on makeup at all times so I just kind of wanted to go through and <laughs> talk about it I guess and go through each like category and tell you guys how much I spent on each thing so the first one I figured we could do is primers now I have three very very expensive primers that I feel like were outliers for the situation because a lot of my primers are also a little bit more like mid-range to drugstore um, but I have three very high-end ones so the total for primers was $461 I had 16 primers total and the average amount of money that I spent on a primer is $28.81 that was not that surprising to me I wasn't super shook I think I was more shook at the amount of primers I have because I feel like I use like four um, so I'm more just like why do I have so many primers I might need to go through and clear them out again because I don't understand how I have 16 primers but yeah th I thought that was kind of interesting a lot of these were a little bit more interesting too so for foundations this did not surprise me because I know that I have well I have a lot of drugstore foundations I also have a lot of higher end foundations so I knew this was gonna be expensive and I also get a lot of foundations to test out on the channel for you guys it's like one of the big things I like to test out so for foundations it was 24 foundations which cost $619 and the average amount I spent on a foundation was $25.79 which I actually felt like was pretty reasonable middle point because a lot of my foundations were like less than $10 and a lot were over 40 so it kind of like met in the middle of those two numbers which I really liked I thought that average was actually pretty spot on some of these averages I'm like that's insane um, but <laughs> this average I felt like was a pretty reasonable amount of money I would spend on a foundation on average I thought it was interesting too that I do feel like m I use most of my foundations like I truly feel like I get very very good use out of my foundations um so this one I wasn't super concerned about and I actually was okay with that one <laughs> for the most part I know you guys are probably thinking this is crazy you also have to remember this is over three years of collecting and building and growing and all of that stuff as far as concealers go this one I think there were a few outliers in the sense that I had three concealers that were sent to me from first aid beauty and I also had a couple of concealers that I got in PR as well so my concealers I have 13 concealers that total for $229 and on average I spent about $17.62 on each concealer I thought that was a pretty decent one too all of my face 
base products. I wasn't really surprised by anything. Everything made kind of a lot of sense. I didn't feel like there were too many outliers or crazy things going on. First, I'll do pressed powders. So I have eight pressed powders and they total for $116 and the average amount of powder was $14.50. I think my having a MAC powder, a Too Faced powder, and a Fenty power overpowered that whole one because most of my powders that I use on a daily basis are my Rimmel Stay Matte and my e.l.f. Press powder, both of which total to $10. So I think having those more expensive ones really skewed it here. Um, and if I were to get rid of the more expensive ones that I don't always use, I think my powders would be a lot more reasonable. But I felt like eight press powders was not like a ton. I didn't feel like that was too, too many. Um, however, this one surprised me. So my loose powders, I have 11 loose powders, which I think is insane. I think that's a lot. Loose powders, especially pressed powders, I feel like it's okay to have a lot because that you go through them very, very quickly. But loose powders, like that takes forever to clear up. Finishing a loose powder takes so, I don't think I've ever finished completely an entire loose powder. It takes so long and I have 11 of them and they totaled to $299, making the average cost about $27.18. That's crazy to me. Like, to the fact that I spent $300 basically on just loose powder, I don't know why that one just kind of shocked me. I felt like I, I felt like I had a really reasonable amount of powders because there was a time when I felt like I didn't have enough loose powder, so I kind of went on a loose powder collecting. I just bought a bunch of them all at once, and now I feel like I have way too many. Like, 11 is way too much. So I think if there's anything I'm going to try to work on getting rid of this year, I'm going to work on using up more of my loose powders because there's just no way I'm going to use all of this up. Like this is, that's so much powder. It's ridiculous. The next thing I want to talk about are my glitters and shimmers. Now there was a huge disparity here because I have a hundred and thirty dollars in Stila glitters, um, which really threw everything for a loop. Those Stila glitters are so expensive, but I don't care. Like while I know that's a lot, I actually use those so much that I feel like I would spend 130 more to get more of those because I actually use those Stila glitters pretty much on a weekly basis. I use them at least once a week, if not more. Um, so I think those Stila glitter purchases are completely justified. However, it did up my glitter quite a bit. So as far as my glitters go, I had $310 total in glitters. And I also did shimmers too, like my Tarte Chrome paints I threw in there and my one ColourPop loose shadow I threw in there just because those didn't, they were too small to have their own category. So I had three $310 total for 23 types of glitters or shimmers and the average purchase was $13.47 and again uh, I know that the Stila glitters are expensive <laughs> like $24 a pop but I love those so much that I actually don't care about that. I totally think that was a justified purchase. I do think $310 on glitter is crazy though. I can admit that that's crazy, but I also, that one I was like, okay, whatever. Um, this one really, really surprised me. So my eyeliners, I only have six eyeliner pencils basically, and I included liquid eyeliners too. I only have six and it totaled to $91 and that put me at a $15 average. I think my Marc Jacob gel liners definitely played an influx in that, but I only have one and a half because I counted my mini as $10. I only have one and a half of those and so I'm not really sure where the other money came from. I guess because liquid eyeliners can be very expensive. My Fenty eyeliner is the one I'm wearing today and it's the one I use a lot and that one is $20. So that was kind of one of the ones where it's like, wow, that added up really fast for six items to be almost $100, that added up way quicker than I would have anticipated, if that makes sense. Okay, then I did brows. So I separated this into brow pencils, brow gels, and brow prom pomades, just because I feel like there is a difference. As far as brow pencils go, I have seven pencils, which this is another one where it was similar to the eyeliners, where I was like, holy crap, that added up so fast. I have seven pencils that total to $102. That one was really surprising. An average of $14.57 per brow pencil. That was surprising to me. I know it shouldn't be because I guess those um, benefit ones and the ABH brow whizzes are about 20 to 24 dollars each which is a lot of money for just a pencil um, but that one definitely took me aback the fact that I had that many brow pencils like I feel like that's not even a ton of pencils and to be at almost a hundred dollars like that added up very quickly that was surprising to me the next one is brow gels I had six gels and they added up to 66 dollars that's totally reasonable for me I think I love 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 brow gels and a lot of those were I had three of those six were, two of them were the ABH clear brow gels that I got through my $100 perk points at Sephora, and one I got as a free deluxe sampler from Benefit. Um, so that was three of the six. So I put those down for $10 a piece because I felt like that was a fair 
that's like what a mini would cost basically. Um, so that's even probably, I probably have less monetary value as far as gels go. But yeah, I thought that was totally reasonable. And I use gels a ton. So that made sense for me. As far as brow pomades go, I have six pomades that total at $80 and it was about $13.33 on average. I wasn't like super shy. I didn't really feel any type of way about the pomades. I felt like that made sense because I have a couple of pomades that are very expensive and I have a couple that are very cheap. So I felt like that also made sense to me. Okay, I only had, if we're gonna talk liquid lipsticks, I only have one lip palette. So I just counted it on its own and it's the $48 for the ABH lips lip palette. Nothing really special about that. Um, then I had, I separated my lipsticks into lipsticks, lip glosses, and then lip bullet lipsticks. So I have 37 lipsticks that total for $484. For some reason, when you're buying ColourPop lipsticks, you think that they don't cost money because they're like $6. So I'm like, oh, what's $6 on another ColourPop lipstick? But that added up quickly. I did just my ColourPop lipsticks and it totaled to almost $100 of that money. The rest is like more expensive ones. Lipsticks are weird because they're so tiny but they're so expensive. They're like 18 to $20. Um, and I think one of the things I'm going to continue as a no buy for in 2018 is lipsticks because I have a ton and I do think they expire a lot quicker than a lot of my other products do. And I want to use up the lipsticks that I have currently. So liquid lipsticks, I'm not buying any more of in 2019. I don't think unless there's one that I'm like crazy obsessed with, I might limit myself to maybe like two for the whole year, but I'm not going to be buying any more liquid lipsticks this year. I have a great selection right now and I just want to keep those going. So that's something I learned from this is I do not need any more lipsticks. Then we went to glosses. I have 14 glosses that covered about $130 and my average was $9.20. I buy very inexpensive glosses. I wasn't surprised by this at all. I buy like NYX butter glosses. The Morphe glosses are two of my favorites um, and I have a couple ColourPop ones. I don't think I had any super expensive glosses except my Marc Jacobs and that was a trial size so I counted it as $10 and I have a couple of like the trial size ones and I counted all of those as 10 too so it's probably probably realistically less than that. My lip glosses are very inexpensive. I don't buy expensive lip glosses. Then I went to bullet lipsticks and this shook me because I barely ever use bullet lipsticks. And I had 12 bullet lipsticks that went for about $120. The average was $10 a lipstick. This, the average did not surprise me because pretty much all of my bullet lipsticks with the exception of like two are Maybelline or drugstore brands. And then I have one like MAC one and one from Bite Beauty. Um, so I think those kind of raised the title. But the fact that I spent, I have $120 worth of stuff that I literally don't use was kind of a wake up call that I like bullet lipsticks too. I don't know why I never reach for them. I just never do. So that was kind of something to trigger to me. Like I need to kind of keep an eye on my bullet lipsticks and make sure I'm using them because you shouldn't just have $120 worth of something sitting around not being used. You know what I mean? Then I did liquid highlighter. I only had three liquid highlighters and they averaged to about $34. I think it was only so high because I have one that I got in a boxy charm from Tarte that was $18. So that kind of like skyrocketed it, but I don't really use liquid highlighters and those are kind of just sitting there too. So that's something I might want to try to incorporate more. All right, so then we get into like contour and bronzers and stuff. So contour palettes. I have seven contour palettes that total for $284. And my average about like what I buy is $40.57. I didn't really realize until we got into the powders how much expensive like higher end contour palettes, um, blush palettes, highlighter palettes we're about to get to isn't crazy. And even just my singles, my single highlighters, single bronzers and single blushes, how much more kind of expensive stuff I have going into that. And I think a lot of it is because a lot of it I bought on sale, number one, especially at like Marshall's. I got like a bunch of stuff at Marshall's and a bunch of stuff during the weekly while I was at Sephora. Um, so I think that contributed to it. But I was very surprised at the amount of high-end stuff I had in my collection when it comes to the powder section. Um, so contour palettes, that was that for that. Highlighter palettes, my ABH Glow Kits really killed me on this because they're $40 to $45 a piece. So uh, I had nine highlighter palettes, five of which were ABH Glow Kits, and they were $320 and about a $35 average, which makes sense because they're about $40 a pop for the ABH ones. So that seemed pretty on par. But I got almost every, I think I got every single one except the Dream Glow Kit, which was 45. I got every single one on sale. So, and I use a lot of those pretty frequently. Those are my favorite highlighter palettes to use, um, especially my like, my Dream and my Aurora and my Moonchild. I love those ones. So that made sense to me too. Blush palettes, I only had five 
and I have $130 put into those, which puts me at about a $26 average. That didn't surprise me either because the blush palettes I own are a little bit pricier besides my Juvia's Place one, so that one didn't really surprise me. All right, if we're going to talk singles, so my single highlighters, this blew me away. I have to tell you guys, like, this was absolutely... Um, appalling and please don't judge me for highlighters so for single highlighters I have 28 highlighters that total for $720 which is just crazy to me that that is that much it really I was really really shocked at how much that was like that that one I knew my palettes like my eyeshadow palettes were going to be a lot but that one in particular the $720 on highlighters like that blew my mind I can't believe how much sparkly powder has taken over my brain and just made me think I need to spend all this money on stuff I had about $25 for an average price of those highlighters but I think there were some outliers in there because I had a Natasha Denona specifically and a Laura Mercier highlighter that were both either $40 or $44 so that kind of change that up. As far as single blushes go, I have 18 blushes and they total to $332, which averages to about $18 a blush. I think that is very representative of my blush collection because I have a lot of things that are a little bit more high end, but I don't think I have a blush that costs more than $30 and I have a lot that costs like $4 from like Wet n Wild and Essence. So that seemed pretty representative. Still thought $332 was a lot for that though. Like I was not expecting that. I, w I thought it was going to be somewhere in the $200 range. So when it over past 300 I was very surprised I was not surprised at how high my bronzers went though um at all because I have two that are very expensive I have two that are just 100 by themselves so I had 15 bronzers and they totaled to 372 dollars if I discount my Chanel and my Marc Jacobs which I felt like were the biggest outliers for that that only puts me at 272 which is still insane um but a lot less but I had to put those in there but I felt like it was important to explain like the outlier in that situation and then I think that also brought up my average because my average for single bronzers was 24 dollars and I don't really think that's representative of the bronzers that I have in my collection. I have a lot of Physicians Formula. I have a Milani one. I have a lot of inexpensive bronzers as well. Um, so I felt like this one was a little bit tricky. Like, I, because of those outliers, that was a little bit harder. Okay, now we're getting into the big numbers. Um, we're gonna talk about, about eyeshadow palettes. In total, I have 64 eyeshadow palettes, which is a lot, but I used to have a lot more, so I'm actually proud of that number <laughs> a little bit, which is sad. But I used to have almost like a 90, so this is a lot better than how it used to be. I've decluttered a lot of stuff. I did it by small, medium, and large. So just small palettes, I have 16 small palettes. They're all right behind me, right in that little organizer. I have 16 smaller palettes, and they were $460 total with about a $28 average. That made sense to me because I have some Pat McGrath palettes, the small ones in there, that definitely skewed that. But I also have a ton of ColourPop and Morphe palettes in there um, that I think kind of swayed that number a little bit. But that's still, again, that number felt like a lot. Like almost $500 felt like a lot. This next one, I was not surprised at all about how much this was. I was, I expected this to be in the thousands. Um, I, for my medium palettes, which is my biggest part of my palette collection, I had 34 palettes and they were $1,421 total with an average of $41 a palette. I have to say what really killed me in this one and what was really shocking when I did the math on was to see all of my Anastasia Beverly Hills and Too Faced palettes. I have three Too Faced and five Anastasia palettes. Those together were like almost $300. I think just like just that, which is a very small part of the 34 palettes and then I also included my Pat McGrath palette in that one which made it I think obviously a lot more expensive. I expected this one to be in the thousands. I didn't expect it to be in the 1400s. I thought it was going to be just over a thousand. So it was definitely a lot more than I was anticipating for that one. Um, and it also makes me happy that I'm doing the one eyeshadow palette a week series on my channel this month because I think I need to start using the palettes I have more since I do have so many and I'm okay with having a lot of options and a lot of palettes, but I need to start using them more because that's a lot of money sitting in a drawer. <laughs> that's my rent. That's like way more than my rent sitting in one drawer of my makeup collection. So I need to start using those up a little bit more, I think. And then my large palettes, I had... 14 palettes and that included my Natasha Denona and all of my Morphe palettes and that was $502 total with an average of $35.85 which I think my Natasha Denona heavily skewed
skewed because um, the majority of those palettes were Morphe palettes. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting. In total, my actual palette collection is really sick. This is like sick. In total, my palettes altogether cost $2,383 for just eyeshadow palettes. That feels like icky to say. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm so glad I want a no buy. I'm gonna extend the no buy, to be honest. Um, so, now if we're talking totals, my total makeup collection, for the best of my ability, I'm sure it's off by some amount of money. Like, I'm sure I didn't do it perfectly with the math. But my total makeup collection is $7,730. And I went through all of the averages, added them up, and then divided them. And my average, the, this isn't really representative. I don't really know why I did this part one because I don't really think it's representative of anything, but I thought it was interesting that out of all of the averages, my average amount spent on like one makeup product would be about $20.86. That's a lot. So $7,730. That's a lot. That's like a car, I think. Um, so that is a lot of money. Again, I have to stress that I definitely did not spend $7,000 in the past three years on makeup, but I probably have spent about $5,000 um, if I'm being totally honest with myself. That's not even counting things that I bought and then sold for a lesser value, things that I gave away. Like, it's not counting any of that. That's a lot of money, and that's something to think about, I think, going forward. And I kind of wanted to talk really quick about why I'm doing the no buy. I'm doing the no buy because of this. I just feel like I have... I, ha I get money, you know, I, ha I make money and everything, and I feel like I blow it on makeup. And it just kind of, instead of me feeling like, oh, I'm going to treat myself to makeup lately, it's felt like I'm blowing money on makeup. Like, I just get excited about something and then buy it, and then it kind of feels like I've wasted that money lately. That's just how my relationship with buying makeup has felt. Um, and I don't want to feel that way anymore. I want to buy stuff that genuinely excites me, that I've had time to look at, I think because of the channel, I felt the pressure to maybe buy something, like especially with something like the James Charles palette. I just had this from the tutorial, but I felt like a real pressure to buy this, even if it wasn't something that super excited me because I wanted to review it for you guys. And while I still want to do review type videos for you guys, I only want to do it for stuff because I'm not a person that's getting PR. I'm not getting sent this makeup for free. Um, I only want to do it for stuff that excites me and I think adds value to my collection. And so while I'm still always going to be somebody who buys makeup and has a big collection and, you know, buys new releases, I do want to start being a little bit more more conscious of the money that I am spending because right now when you add up all the numbers if you ever want to go into no buy and you need like motivation to go into no buy add up your makeup collection because I promise that's all the motivation you need um this was really interesting to look at and I liked breaking it up I really liked Lauren's idea I'm gonna link her video down below obviously you guys should go check it out I really liked the idea of breaking it up into categories because I don't need more lipsticks at this point. I don't really need any more highlighters at this point. Um, and same thing with like eyeshadow palettes. Like I have plenty of all of those things and it's kind of where I can see like, hmm, well, I don't really buy that many blushes. So I shouldn't feel too bad about treating myself to like a blush or stuff like that. It's just interesting to have it all sitting out here. So yeah. <laughs> That was my video for this week. I hope you guys liked it. I know it's kind of a random weird video to make but I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about all of this because I spent like two hours doing it. <laughs> I love you guys so much. If you like this video please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly just so happy you're watching me. Thank you for being here. I love you guys so so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. Everything I'm wearing on my face, my merch, and all of my social medias and a ton of other fun stuff will be linked in the description box down below. And yeah I love you guys so so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!